India and especially British imperialism in India. Unlike Africa, Asia was not as separated. You have you have the um, Dutch in the Dutch East India's modern Indonesia today. Remember, this is where the United States is being moved with um, the Philippines. You have the French in French Indochina in Vietnam. And do not forget Korea. As Japan industrializes, this is going to be the area that Japan. But if we look at the large area of India, we look at the area which uh, becomes um, Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Burma. All of this was British territory, and it is going to be the it's going to be the jewel in the crown of the British Empire. So when they talk about India, they talk about it as the jewel in the crown of all the colonies that Britain has. Remember, and this is probably an annotation you should make, Britain is, has the, as the largest empire. And one of the things that Britain was proud of is the sun never set on the British Empire. They had colon, they had, remember, they had Canada, they had colonies in South America, they have India, they have colonies in Africa, they have uh, a sphere of influence in China, they have Australia. So somewhere in a 24-hour day, the sun was shining on the British Empire. Well, India becomes the jewel of the crown. Of all the colonies that Britain has, India is the most important. It's not just because India is a major supplier of raw materials to Britain. You also probably want to write, even though it's not on the slide, it's a huge market for Britain. So it's a major supplier of raw materials. It's a major uh, market. So this is an area where India is going to make Britain a ton of money and so it's going to be a very very important enterprise colony. Now wait as you read in the reading remember the way there's steps to it. During the age of exploration the British and French begin to move into India after the during like after the um, French and Revolutionary, um, not the French and Revolutionary, the French and Indian War, or in Europe the Seven Years' War, Britain becomes the sole country involved in India. And this is when the Mughal Empire begins to decline. And then remember, according to the reading, and you may want to make an annotation, you had the British East India Company, then you have the Raj, which is total British control. But when they are even under the British East India Company and the Raj, these are the economic policies that Britain had. One of the things that Britain, that the Indians are forced to do is produce raw materials for Britain's British factories. So when the American cotton supply is interrupted um, with the American Civil War and the, American, the British can't get American cotton, they're getting their, their cotton from India. India will only be allowed to sell British goods. Let's say, for example, a French country, company wants to buy cotton from India. Indians will not be allowed to sell it, even though they may pay the, um, they'll be willing to pay more. Under economic, British economic policies, India can only sell raw materials to Britain, and Britain sends the price for those. Also, which we saw in the reading, one of the things that the um, British did is they closed um, the textile industry in India. India traditionally had a textile industry. Britain doesn't want that textile industry competing, so it, sh it closes down because that's just one example. You cannot create any goods that will compete with British goods. So those are some of those economic policies. Remember, just as you saw in the video with Africa, the economic policies always favor the colonizer, in this case, Britain. 
So there were some positive and negative effects. I mean, one of the things that the Brit British do is that increase in agriculture, building the railroads, increased sanitation, health um, hospitals are built, so health care increases. Notice it says here this, this uh, literacy and schools and universities. Remember though, when you are when Britain is building these, um, teaching the Indians to read, teaching them to become literate, remember it's going to be in westernization. It's going to be in western form. So you're going to learn about your language you're going to learn is English. You're going to learn in English. You're going to be trained in English ways, English manners, English customs, and the language you will be speaking is English. Now, and then we see also that you do enter a period of peacetime. So these are the things that the British did that were good. However, the negative effects, well, you have to judge. Does the negative effects outweigh the positive? First of all, Indians had, in their own country, had no political or economic power. Mahat Gandhi, may want to make an annotation, he is a independence leader in India, will one time say we would better, better have our own bad government than the good government you, that you say you can bring to us. But you have to remember, the Indians have no say in their government, no economic power. You see this self-sufficiency. Before the British come into India, India is able to produce all the, all the things it needs to survive. Remember, you're talking about this country that at once had great empires. Now all of a sudden, the British come in, they force the Indians to grow cash crops, which means they're not producing food, which means they can't feed their population. They have to import many things. That's one of the things that happens as a result. One of the things, as you saw in Africa, with the, the, with the cash crops, famine increases. Well, this is what's going to happen in, in India. You also have an increase in the spread of Christianity, and that is going to be one of the causes, um, not the spread of Christianity. You don't have an increase in the spread of Christianity. The British, remember, that duty to civilize, bring those Christian min missionaries in, bring those people to civilize, the Indians do not feel respected in their ways and feel that the way that the British are treating them less than equals that racist attitude. That's going to tr um, threaten traditional Indian values in life. One of the things also to remember this you have this Hindu-Muslim conflict. The British, the two things the British do to keep the Indians from unifying is increasing that conflict. So stoking those tensions so those two groups don't unite. And they're also using the Hindu caste system as a way to also manipulate the ruling of India. Now, what is going to happen is, in, in class, you're going to see the Indians are going to rebel. And you have a group, and this Sepoy Rebellion happens when the British East India Company is ruling. So you may want to make an annotation time of British East India Company. And what the British do, the Indians believe that the British are not respecting their ways. A sepoy, and you want to make an annotation of this, a sepoy is, an, is, a, is a native Indian in the army, in the Brit, British army. They are the ones, they're being paid, they're Indians, and they are serving at the British East India Company. They're the soldiers for the British East India Company. Or for our purposes, um, British, they're Indian soldiers in the British Army. They, um, you have at the same time, you have this, this increased race of attitudes, this Christianity coming in, that the Indians are feeling the British are not valuing them. The Indians are beginning to get a sense of nationalism, so that desire for an independence, why are we listening to them? You also have economic problems growing, so you have the Indians are not able to import as much. There's a lack of jobs. Those are the causes, but what really sparks it, and you saw it in the reading, was the grease bullet rumor. Remember, Hindus and Muslims, Muslims cannot touch pork. Hindus cannot touch beef. Well, the Indians believed, and you'll see this in the video we see in class, 
that what was happening is they get this new bullet and to do this bullet you have to bite the paper off and you put the bullet in the gun. Well this paper was greased and they believed that the British didn't respect them and were soaking these bullets in this pork and beef fat so therefore they were being forced to go against their religious beliefs. Have this huge rebellion. It's brutal on both sides and what's going to happen is the rebellion is going to fail because you cannot get the Hindus and Muslims to unite and weak leadership. The results of that is the British East India Company is no longer in charge of India. Britain takes control. You have the Raj now and Indians get even tighter control. You get an increased racist attitude. Remember this was the Sepoy Rebellion was violent on both sides as you saw from the reading. You have this increased distrust and this idea of Indian nationalism begins to surface. Why are we listening to them? Let's, this is our nation. As a result of the Sepoy Rebellion and that increased nationalism, you're going to get two groups that develop. The Indian National Congress, and you want to make a note, is, is the Hindu group. You also want to make a note, this is where Mahat Gandhi is going to come out of, and this is where um, Nehru, your first prime minister, is going to come out of if India. The Muslim League, and you want to make a note, is going to be your Muslims. This is where Pakistan is going to come from, and this is where Jinnah, um, who will leave Pakistan, will come. So those are the just the brief notes on India. I'm hoping you made some annotations with the notes, and with that, I will see you next class.